I was trying to, to retire from, from general contracting work. We wanted something that uh, we could take to the sites that we like to camp. And where we like to camp, Class C's can't go. Class A's can't go. And um, I wanted something that I didn't go crazy with just sitting around the house. So this fit the bill very nicely. My name is Bob and I'd like to show you a passion I've had over the last two and a half years of converting a military truck into a camper. For probably the last 10 years, I've been camping out of a pop-up tent trailer. Got a little bit crowded and, and uh, not as much privacy, of course, but we enjoyed it, my wife and I and our children. I found uh, a, uh, this six by six in Ramona, California from an individual who had bought it from the Utah Guard and uh, it's classified, the Army classified it as a BMY 923A2. Now, what that is, th there's a lot of different classifications in there, but the 923 signifies that it was a troop carrier. I bought my doors and my windows from Lippert Industries. Great company, easy to work with, and uh, they also supplied me with, with my fold-down stairs. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this at a lower height than five foot. I wanted to bring it down so it was manageable. I had a, a torch and I started cutting away. Uh, I got rid of the, of the everything that was on the steel deck completely stripped it down. I extended the front 18 inches forward towards the cab and I extended the back three foot to the to the rear. At the same time I lowered it approximately two feet. The purpose of that was to have easier entry into uh, the camper itself. The framework on this truck is two by two 14 gauge steel and it's covered with a 1 8 inch aluminum plate. Not bulletproof. It is, it is uh, strong and sturdy. I've got two inches of rigid foam insulation inside, and, uh, and then it's all covered in the inside with, with um, marine plywood and then a covering on top of that. Back here, I've got some storage. I got my leveling pads and, and um, my slide out supports. If I'm going to be out uh, any more than a couple of days, I like to put a support underneath each slide out to give it stability. Uh, not so hard on the, on the slide out mechanism itself. Um, so I've got some storage here for pillows, blankets, and this, this dinette here converts to a, a, a single bed. Actually, it, it's great for a couple of small kids. I just folds down, rests on the spot, and then you put the, uh, these uh, pads down and you've got a bed. Uh, over here, uh, this took some thought. Down below, I have my electrical uh, AC as well as my 12-volt system. Um, all the circuit breakers are, are down there. And um, the solar runs everything in here, TV, the refrigerator, the microwave, uh, everything with the exception of the AC unit. So, and this is my, my thermostat that controls it so I can either turn the heat on or, um, or the AC if I'm, if I'm plugged into my generators or shore. I uh, neglected to tell you I have a, a switch that goes from house to shore. So I can plug into an outlet. If I pull into an RV spot, it's, I can run my extension cord over and plug in and I'm, I'm set to go. Uh, all my lighting is individual. Um, that one down here, uh, I'll show you later. But yeah, everything is, um, everything is running off of the, of the batteries right now. Um, I tried to get as much uh, storage as I possibly could. Everything that you see in here I hand built. All the cabinets, everything. So uh, I've got lighting under here that's um, 
can be controlled. They're, they're all individual because I figure, hey, sometimes, you know, maybe you won't want all your lighting on. So um, I've got lots of lighting at night. This lights up very, very well. Um, I've got these here. One of these is for sure AC and the other one's uh, off the converter. So they still, they all run 110, but one of them's for uh, the uh, 3,500 watt inverter and the other one is sure. So uh, uh, I, I made these up because my wife wanted more kitchens, uh, kitchen counter space. So um, this kind of serves as a whole area for serving or whatever. Um, I have a, a suburban um, oven cooktop. S seems to work real well. And then, and then um, for my heater down below, it's a 43,000 BTU suburban heater. And this is more spices or canned goods. Um, you can hear my refrigerator running right now. And uh, it's already getting cold in there and I just turned it on. But that's, that's operated by this switch right here. This turns my inverter on and off and it's off now. This size refrigerator, it's, um, it's about a 14 cubic foot and it's about the biggest refrigerator I could possibly get in here and still do everything. Behind the TV up against the wall is my inverter and uh, I needed uh, some air space that, that, uh, that will let enough air in there to keep that inverter cool. So, um, uh, and then I've got a queen bed here and it's a full size queen. Uh, actually, I got a friend of mine that's 6'10 and he can fit in there real well. I mean, it's, it's, this here's good. And uh, this is something my grandkids love though. And then something I came up with that I'm, I'm quite proud of and I, it didn't hit me until actually I was a little bit under underway in, in construction is this um, this bunk bed here so it uh, it works real well the kids it sleeps eight what can I say if you've got a couple of kids uh, if not um, seven adults this is this is still a work under project. Uh, I feel like uh, I haven't spent a much uh, as much time as what I need to. Two and a half years is not enough. Eventually, I want to have a bench seat in here that folds down, uh, so you can have more seating area. Um, you know, if you're camping. But here's another queen bed. So. Um, at, uh, my wife and I are usually on this one here. If we've got grandkids with us, they're scattered all over, or my, my son and his wife, or whatever. So that, uh, it serves, it, it serves a purpose. And it's, we've been quite happy with it so far. Like I said, there's, there's more things that we'd, I'd like to do with it. I have uh, talked with a couple of friends of mine that had a separate toilet and shower, and I didn't feel like that was necessary. Um, you're only in there for two or three minutes. So I made a combo where I've got my own, I've got a shower and, uh, and toilet combination. So uh, works great, happy with it. Got a fan in there that during the day, if it gets a little bit warm in here, um, we just turn the fan on, open up, up a couple of windows, and it draws the air through. So, a lot of like uh, uh, things, just you know, what a Class C, a Class C motorhome will have, or a Class A. What, what we're sitting on are uh, Bostrom uh, Pro Ride seats. They're air adjustable, and uh, that's one thing that when I drove this back from from uh, California uh, not super comfortable uh, my wife has ridden in it and she said if you don't do something with these seats I'm gonna have to get a better sports bra so uh, a lot of jerking but these seats take a lot of it out that's very good and 
And uh, nope, it, it's. I had to add this. Any of you that have seen uh, some of the Andy pictures, you got to have a hula girl. <laughs> so I did add that. This is that AC unit that I was talking to talking with you about. It's a it's a beast. Fully adjustable. I can aim the air to the back, and it it helps cool off the the cab if we're if we're on the road. But uh, this truck here, right now we're sitting at 3,124 miles and 113 hours. Behind this panel right here is my 85 gallon fuel tank. It's a diesel. And um, I wanted something that's a little more secure, so I've got it set up so it's lockable, but then you spin the lid off and you can fill, the, fill that 85 gallon tank up. Coming back this way, Behind this panel right here, which I shouldn't have to open, is a 42-gallon Blackwater tank and a 48-gallon Greywater tank. Underneath the rig, I've got 100 gallons of fresh water. Uh, we've been out on, the, on, uh, on trips a little bit over a week and haven't had a bit of problem. Down behind my, my bumper here is my storage for my uh, for my hoses and the um, drain for the for the black water and um, So my intention was is to use every bit of space I possibly could so I will tell you I had this truck Had this truck for almost a year in which I was making drawings and um, and getting it getting my head wrapped around what I wanted to do on this side here, I have a, a Weber grill. That's my outdoor, outside cooking. And um, it's hooked to natural gas. I have uh, two 30 pound, oh, I, this, this is all storage area up in here for my air hoses, air gun if I should have a flat. Right here are my my propane tanks, and they they slide out so I have easy access to them. Over here is my my water pump. I didn't want to get to a point where I said to myself, "I forgot this, I left this out, and then have a problem." I've already experienced that a little bit on the electrical, but everything so far has turned out. This here, <clears throat> I have. Uh, 700 watts of uh, solar panel that generates 78 volts of electricity that come down and uh, goes through an MPTS Morningstar uh, charge converter, uh, charge control, and it feeds these four deep cycle Trojan batteries that I have. I decided to go with two Honda uh, generators. I generate enough solar power that I can run run my microwave and uh, and everything else inside the cab. It keeps the batteries up. Uh, I neglected to tell you that uh, I have a 3500 watt inverter uh, in the, in the uh, camper. This truck uh, operates off of 24 volts. So I have two systems. I got a 12 volt system that operates everything inside the camper. 12 volt for the engine uh, as well as my uh, off-road lights. Up on top on either side I have 160 uh, watts of um, lighting. They're, they're all LEDs and then in the center section uh, that's 250 watts or 200, 250 watts of uh, LED in the center. Lights things up pretty well. I don't need anything really more than that. I've been back in the woods and um, it, it's quite adequate. Like I said, uh, it's an 8.3 liter Cummins engine with a turbo, and uh, it's actually got the generator that puts out everything that I need. I've added an AC unit to this truck. The Army does not offer one. It's not an option. So um, at least not in this truck at here. Maybe uh, some of their vans, they do, they do put them in. But So I made the compressor mounting bracket. It has its own drive and um, uh, inside I have a that you will see it's uh, about a 9500 
uh, BTU AC unit, so it's military grade, puts out a lot of cold air. Actually, it helps cool off the, some of the, some of the uh, camper inside. I would just say for anybody that would like to do something like this is research, research, research. <laughs> There's a lot of it. This was built in my backyard in the open on an RD slab. I, I had the advantage of being a mechanical engineer. Uh, I had done, uh, I was a senior engineer for a, for a, a steel company, so I, I had welded before. Uh, I knew how plans worked, how to pull plans together, and how to, how to work off of plans. So in, unless you're prepared, uh, unless you've got a lot of friends that are willing to help you on this, um, you might want to look at just buying a Class C because you may not, this may be over your head. My, my kids love to camp, like I said before, my grandkids, and uh, ever since I started building this, they've crawled up on it, crawled in it, and uh, in fact, I stopped worrying about them, you know, falling. It just, <laughs> they, uh, they had as much fun watching me build it and, and participating as I did building it.